Legacy VTK is really an antiquated file format, and I strongly encourage you to use XML VTK instead, especially for writing large data sets. So for anything larger than a few megabytes, please use XML VTK. And of course, to use it, you have to install the VTK library on your computer. On Compute Canary clusters, we have VTK installed as a module. Inside the zip download in the codes directory, I have an example of a C++ file. The file name is asgrid.cpp. That shows you how you can write a simple three-dimensional structure in VTK to a file. And I also have a make file that helps you compile this code. VTK also has API for Python and for Java, in addition to C++. And now there's also a JavaScript version, vtk.js. So of all of these interfaces, Python is probably the most commonly used nowadays, but still to use it, you have to install VTK library in Python. Another great option for writing XML VTK files from Python is a third-party library called PyEVTK. You can install it with uh, Miniconda or with pip or however you install Python packages. And it gives you a very simple interface for writing VDK files in different VDK formats. For example, this script shows you how you can write a three-dimensional NumPy array into a VDK image data file. In VDK language, image data or structured points is the very first file format where you store data on top of a Cartesian mesh. And here I simply initialize a 30 by 30 by 30 NumPy array. I fill it with elements and then with a single function image to VDK, I store this file, I store this uh, three-dimensional array to disk to a file decocube dot, uh, most likely will be written as decocube.vti file. So if you install pi EVTK on your machine, you can simply run this script and it will create a VTK file for you automatically. And if you download this package from source, inside the source directory, in the example subdirectory, there will be a number of examples that will show you how you can write data on a Cartesian mesh, on a rectilinear mesh, on a structured uh, grid, that is curvilinear mesh, on points, etc. As I mentioned, you can think of Paraview as a GUI front end to various VDK classes. Everything that you can store inside a VDK class, you can visualize inside of Paraview. Polygonal and unstructured data are probably two most versatile formats, and they can encode a lot of different data structures. So here are two examples. On the left, uh, a few years ago, I wrote a code that lets you visualize connections between different regions in the brain based on some uh, filters. And these connections are simply stored as XML VDK polygonal data. So both the points and then the connections between points. So this is similar to a three-dimensional graph or three-dimensional network. And then you can spin this in 3D. And on the right, I have an example uh, this is actually a standalone code that I wrote that can store a graph or a network in two formats, either as polygonal data or as unstructured data. And a researcher took this code and applied it to bioinformatics data. I don't actually know what the data set is, but here you have several hundred thousand nodes, and then these nodes are connected by, uh, by links. You can actually visualize and spin this very easily in Paraview using either polygonal data format or unstructured grid data format.